Welcome everyone to another episode of Indie Reads Aloud. Today, Kathleen Casca is returning to read more from her wonderful collection. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for coming back again. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I love having repeat readers because I feel like we're friends and now we know each other. And now you can tell me all these secrets that I didn't know before through reading your work. It's super fun. I love it. It is. It is. <laughs> so today you're going to be reading your book, Run Dog Run, which is book one in the Kate Carraway Animal Rights Mystery Series. So this is a cozy mystery. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you got the idea of this story and, and how it came up that you were going to write about animal rights? Yes. Uh this is actually the very first mystery I ever wrote. Um, I wrote it a little over 20 years ago and then I just put it aside for a while. But at the time I wanted to write a mystery that made a difference, call it a mystery with a cause. Okay. And I chose animal rights because I, I'm, believe in animal rights. And when I lived in Austin many years ago, I was a member of Wildlife Rescue, which is an organization that rescued injured and orphaned wildlife with the intention of releasing them back in the wild. And so I used that idea to uh, create this mystery series. And um, I decided to start the first one and center it around greyhound racing. So Run Dog Run deals with greyhound racing, takes place in Texas. And um, so that's where I started. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Wow. Can you tell me a little bit about your heroine, Kate Carraway, before we get into the reading? Yes. Uh, she's in her mid-40s. She is a very confident, determined woman, but often rushes in too quickly and makes uh, mistakes and gets herself in trouble. That's how this book starts off. Kate has made a really big mistake and she's having to deal with it. That's the beginning of the book. And this is this mistake that she's made is the thread throughout the entire series. So she's dealing with it, you know, a little bit at a time as the series goes on. So- uh, Okay. Well, that, this sounds like this could really be something that people could dig into and, um, and really find a love for this character. How many books are in the series? There are three. Three. Okay. Awesome. Trilogies. I love trilogies. <laughs> so- um, I would love it if you could read a little bit for us and then we'll talk a little bit at the end. This again is Run Dog Run from Kathleen Kaska. Wondering how her life could have unraveled so quickly, Kate Carraway waited at baggage claim for British Airways to locate her last piece of luggage. The events of the past few days fogged her mind. No time to make a rational decision. Just get the hell out of the country while there was still a chance, before things got really ugly. Her stomach tensed and she drew in a deep breath. Bad coffee and stale peanuts were the only thing that kept her from passing out. Tired of watching the same CNN news report for the fourth time, Kate looked over at her husband. Jack had finally dozed off, his chin resting on his chest. She wanted to pull him close, to place his head on her shoulder and make him comfortable, but she dared not wake him. Neither she nor Jack had slept since they left my Nairobi 48 hours ago. He was snoring lightly like a child. Kate watched for a moment longer. A gentle pulsing from a small vein in his temple made her smile, but only for a brief second. How in the hell did I manage to screw things up so quickly? Kate chided herself. Jack had assured her that she had done the right thing, but she had discovered a frightful side of herself 
and was terrified that it would emerge again the next time she became outraged, the next time she was pushed too far. She could not live with that. The aroma of fresh baked cinnamon rolls wafted in, bringing with it a feeling of comfort, yet sadness. Her chest ached for home. Since setting up her research camp and moving lock, stock, and barrel to Kenya, Kay had thought very little of what she had left behind. Kenya had become her home even before the idea for the research camp had taken hold. She'd first gone to East Africa 20 years earlier as part of a work study program during her second year at the university and remembered an odd sensation as the wheels of the plane touched down at the Nairobi airport. She felt as if she had returned home after years, after eons of time, to a place of her birth. Was the home she longed for the place she had left or the place to which she had returned? That question she feared would not be answered anytime soon. Giving into hunger pangs, Kate made her way to the food court where a line had formed in front of front of Cinnamon's Bakery. She smiled at the thought of that sweet smell grabbing hold of travelers and pulling them like a magnet to the counter. She ordered two cinnamon rolls and two cups of coffee. Jack was awake and stretching when she returned. I honestly believe you could sleep right out there on the runway, she said. Come on, there's a table by the window. I have breakfast. This isn't a roll, Jack said when he opened the box. It's a cinnamon mound and I plan to eat every bite. Sorry I dozed off. Don't be silly. I'm surprised we're both still standing. As Kate cut into her roll, he noticed Jack set his coffee down and leaned back in his chair, a puzzling look spread over his face. What? He smiled. You look peaceful. That's what they say about the dead right before they close the lid. They finished their meal when they heard their names announced to come to British Airways baggage claim. That was close, Jack said. We have less than an hour before our flight to Austin. You think we made the right decision then, Kate asked, about why we left or where we're going. Kate stood to leave and suddenly grabbed her stomach as a sense of terror washed over her. She closed her eyes and tried to steady her breathing. Until two days ago, she'd never understood the meaning of panic attacks. Now they hit frequently without warning. She felt as if she had stepped up to the lip of a cliff and only blackness showed below. It took all her energy not to lose control and topple over the edge. Kate, Jack cried, sit down. I'm okay, it, it just hits sometimes. Take it easy, I'll get you some water. No, no, don't leave me. Try to relax. Once we get to the ranch, you can rest. He pulled his chair up next to her and waited until her hand stopped shaking and the color returned to her face. When Kate and Jack landed at Kennedy that afternoon, they debated about where to go next. They talked about spending a few weeks up on Cape Ann, where they had often vacationed after baseball season ended. Chicago was always a possibility. It had been their home for 17 years before they moved to Africa. The old baseball crowd would welcome them back, but they'd be curious and too quick with questions Kate could not answer. The most logical place was Texas, Kate's home state where she was born and lived until she finished college. Although most of her, of her friends had moved, Max and Olga Rodriguez had put down stakes near Wimberley and showed no sign of leaving. They were the closest thing to family Kate had left. We made the right decision, Jack said. I can't think of a better place to be than with Max and Olga. And you haven't seen your goddaughter in more than five years. I know, I can't wait to see them, but I wonder if it might be better to have a few weeks to ourselves. You know how crazy things can get on the ranch. And when I talked to Olga about coming, she said that Rosalinda was up to her old tricks and was giving her father fits. Jack laughed. Well, when isn't she? Besides, a little distraction now might be better than having too much time on your hands. 
Come on, let's collect our bags and head to the gate. Surprisingly, Kate slept most of the way to Texas, waking only when she felt the cabin pressure change and the plane descending. The muscles in her neck had cramped from leaning in the same position for three hours. But otherwise, she felt an awareness of her body, a feeling of wholeness that offered a little hope. She smiled at Jack. Are we there yet? I snuck a sedative into your water, he said. Kate gasped and realized he was joking. Well, I'm grateful to whatever was in my water. I actually feel normal. Enjoy it, he laughed. We're about to feel anything but normal. It's 10 in the evening and the temperature at the Austin airport is 93 degrees with 90% humidity. We're going to need bathing suits. Kate's car heart gave way to tears when she spotted Olga standing by the baggage carousel. She ran over and threw her arms around the woman who was the closest thing to a sister Kate had ever had. Welcome home, Chica, Olga said. If you didn't come visit soon, I was going to Kenya to get you. The bungalow's ready. I filled the fridge and turned down the AC. Jack, you're... You're a sight. <laughs> I hope that's a compliment, he said. You're as gorgeous as ever. Don't I get a hug, too? Of course, but don't look too closely or you'll see streaks of gray in my hair. And believe me, they're not due to my age. Kate laughed. Uh-oh, what's my goddaughter brewing up now? You'll find out soon enough. Why didn't you tell me sooner you were coming? I get a call before I finished my first cup of coffee this morning telling me that you and back Jack are back in the states what's going on is everything okay nothing a little rest won't cure Jack said glancing at Kate I'll tell you the sort of details later Kate said whenever you're ready Olga said but don't expect much peace and quiet when I left the ranch Rosalinda was making plans for you All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Kathleen. My dog, Charlie, thinks that he might want to read your book. You can hear him in the background. He's, he's yes, definitely, well, you know, and that was, that was nice, you know, run dog <laughs> run and we've got Charlie in the background. <laughs> and I must say that Charlie is a really cute dog. I see oh, him on Facebook all the time. Thank you so much. He's, uh, he's very interested right now in what the mailman is up to. Um, so, how much research did you have to do once you decided that you were going to write about greyhound racing? Well, I first, I read a lot of books uh, about the process of greyhound racing, and um, I had to do what I didn't want to do, <laughs> and that is go to a greyhound uh, racing park. And how did you find races. that? How was that? It was interesting. Um, it kind of surprised me that the place was huge, uh, very much like a horse racing uh, track. Um, and, but there was no one there. You know, the, the bleachers were almost empty. And uh, so I thought that was kind of odd. It was in the middle of a weekday afternoon and I watched a, a few races. They weren't all that, exciting to me mm -hmm. uh, but I just wanted to get to get the feel for what it's like um, and that racetrack was um, uh, south of Houston um, but I'm happy to say that um, there's very little live greyhound racing going on in the United States now yes yeah I I'm pleased that it's a sport that is uh, waning in popularity as well Thank you so much, Kathleen. I, I I really appreciate meeting you, and I love when you come back to read aloud for us, and I, I look forward to having you back again. I know we have several books that we still have to get through, so I, I'm really excited. Thank you so I much too. for I, your I enjoy time. being here. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome.